Barry Sun or some shit. Nah, they go. Nah, they might think that you play ball or something because they, they well, short. Look at, look at they're you. pretty short out there. They're like what five, 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 five six. They're the pretty man. short out there, little Asian dudes. Well, I see a tall Asian. I'm like, My man. nigga, but they be having crazy shit. In, yo, I be seeing crazy shit in Japan. They be having like a. I'm going sideways. They be having like um like sex things outside where you put your 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 dick in an ass or something like that, and they fucking make you come. They be having stalls like that, b. They have stalls like that over there, b. I don't know. I gotta. Perp- Let me I gotta see. I'm gonna look this shit up. Yo, you gonna go? You gonna go to the geisha house? A geisha houses though? No, Come I, on, why y'all being punks, no. b? They're not gonna fuck you. They're gonna walk around naked. They're gonna massage your back. They're gonna pour hot water on you. <laughs> <laughs> then tell her that. Just look at her. You don't gotta no, just look at fuck. So, um, pay, pay pay some money. Just sit and talk with her for an hour, <laughs> like a therapy section with her. <laughs> but I think with those, even when there's some regulations, like I don't think you could just like go to one. I think you have to be like kind of ordained or invited to go to those type of places. <laughs> Let's see what it do, what it do, what it do, what it do, what it do. Yo, 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 Talk to him, yo, yo, yo. This nigga was bourbon. So my man, yo, yo's is leaving. That's why he's leaving. Getting on the midnight train, Osaka. Oh, what? You on that midnight train? I see on the midnight plane. Plane. On the midnight plane, uh, Osaka. So you, you, we live, we live, baby, or starting? Or we live. Doing? We live, nigga. We live. No surprise. We in the car. All right. So what's I'm up, down up for everybody? The drive. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Richard Picasso. It's the boy Yo Yo. And we are here with, with me and G out of character. It's the boy G scratching his legs. Yeah, and he finally found a tag called what? P word out of character. What? You had a new? Don't you have a new tag? What do you mean? That you stole? Oh, the I can't. No, no, no. I said I'm gonna make that my tag. Oh. I, I haven't. I haven't. I'm gonna start putting that in everything. though. watch. Don't gonna... you get a girl to do it? Why? It sounds so much better that I took him to do it. I didn't have to pay him. I ain't say none until somebody figures it out. Nobody's gonna know where that comes from. Nobody's gonna come on. Nobody's gonna know where that comes, and it's mine. You know, like I don't go fuck right. what he says. So at the time of this recording, it's ten eleven a.m. Uh huh. We're doing like an early podcast because I have to get ready for a fifteen hour flight uh-huh. to Japan, Osaka, uh-huh. Japan, with a layover in Taipei, Taiwan, for four hours. So. Uh-huh. We want. I wanted to knock this out early because I gotta run around and do some other things and hopefully try to get a power nap. See his hoes before he gets on a plane. I ain't got no. This is the. I ain't got no hoes. Why everybody think I got hoes? You got more. This is this is the day that you get the pee from all the hoes because you gotta be like, yo, baby, I don't know when I'll be back. You know, hopefully nothing don't happen and I come back. You know, but you should give me some sloppy top before I go because it might be the last time that you get to. What? Yo, B. That's that's the the gift way of saying goodbye. B. Goodbye. Oh. B. Yeah, goodbye. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> I'll be I'll be back home soon. Oh shit, nah, yo. She suck you good enough, you have to come back. <laughs> that's a bar. <laughs> she suck you so good, you're like, oh shit, I'm back here. Biggie said it. You know what I'm saying? I'm back here. Like, head so good, she had to come back. Yo, that's that's not even not even to lead off with that, but I'll be honest. That's that's really like a um, and I can't speak for every man because not every man likes to guess. You know what I mean? Some sop down, but mm. for the men that do, when they're trying to court a woman, and they finally get some, I be not from her. If that be can can become a regular for him, that keeps the man there. If a dude comes from a hard day at work, takes a shower, takes his shoes off, you know what I mean, do, do shit, and then comes out and shorty's just like, she or a dude's working in his back room in his office, and and shorty just comes out of nowhere, or a dude's sitting there watching the fucking NFL game, watching NBA game. It's eight o'clock at night. It's twelve in the afternoon. It's seven in the morning. He'll appreciate that shorty that just comes and just gives him pleasure. Men are egotistical. 
And it's it, it, not only a pleasurable thing to put your thingy in her mouth. Dingy. It's a, but in my opinion, it's it's a mental it's a mental thing too that she's willing to make you feel that good. That feel me? Good. Like, oh, you know, what I'm just saying, about? women. I'm just saying. I'm just trying to let y'all know what niggas like. Yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Oh, it's also fifty years of hip hop. I know this weekend. That's what went on. Yeah, that's like one of the biggest things. Oh, there was mad fights too. There was mad fights. I didn't see no fights. Yeah, really. the, uh, last week the MLB got into a fight. What? Uh, I don't know. Uh, two people threw punches. Ramirez and this black dude, and Ramirez knocked the black dude on the floor. But the black dude kind of looked like he could fight. He, looked, he threw his hands up good, but it didn't. Ramirez was falling down. You know, shorter people. They just once they throw that punch like this, that loops, and they catch you. You're like, <laughs> oh, you go down like Timber. Yo, but it was it. The whole here. Let me see if I find it. The whole field. Everybody came off the field. I think I saw a clip of that. Yeah, everybody came off the field, bro. They I mean, also, it's your man. It's like it's a war now. Yeah, but they don't do that in baseball, though. Baseball people don't do that. Baseball people, they used to do that. Baseball people don't do that no more. Like, yo, you know, they say baseball's America's oldest pastime, but um, for me, it, it's kind of faded out. Like wrestling, hmm. like back in the days, wrestling used to be dope when you had Stone wrestling Cold, The Rock. Now, you think? Wrestling, in my opinion, yeah. I don't like it. I don't like it. Why do you think? Why do you think they gotta pull these celebrities? I saw Hulk Hogan say something. You know, he said back in the days, um, we kind of had to earn our persona. We had to earn our persona. You had to earn that. You know, the the what the clothes, the, the outfit that we wore, the how we branded ourselves. You know, now everybody wears the same thing. Everybody has the same reactions. He was like, you know. We used to we used to go out hurt every night and perform and and now these niggas they don't do that you know he, this is whole Hogan saying he's like these niggas they they they'll pass up out the opportunity and then there'll be a last minute switch and somebody else will come up and he's like you know we used to perform hurt we used to I, in my opinion absolutely I think um I don't think wrestling is what it is what it used to be and I don't think baseball is what it used to be I used to sit there and watch a four or five hour game of baseball. I sit there and watch that when, you know, it was the Yankees, you had Bernie Williams, you know, yeah, yeah, Jason Giamma, even Alex Rodriguez. I mean, who's really like you know, the biggest... You know, look at the Mets, you had Piazza, you know, you had... You a had, lot of the stars that we had. Remember Ken Griffey? Yeah, Ken, Ken you had Griffey Ken Jr. Griffey, you had Mark McGuire, you had Sammy Sosa. Like, come on, like, remember, remember our baseball? Our baseball was crazy. And not to, I'm not downplaying baseball now, but in my opinion, nah, baseball don't do what it used to do. Baseball don't... Do, and, and social media and everything, you would think it would expand and reach more people. I think it kind of hurt baseball. Hmm. Baseball used to be watched at the hour that you watch it, and then you get it on ESPN, and then or you go to the game. Now for what? Why are you gonna go to the game for? You fucking throw on a fifty-inch screen and you fucking say, "I don't watch the fucking game." You know, like I don't think baseball got the same merits as it used to have. Absolutely not. Hmm. You like baseball? Uh, I like going to the games more than watch on TV. I used to always go with uh, y- Yolita a lot because she loved baseball games, and I used to get discount tickets from my job. But they used to be they used to sponsor the Yankees, uh-huh. and we would get tickets for like two, three dollars for seats. Okay. But then I guess they lost like I guess whatever deal, and now you you can go to Mets, but you don't get those two, three dollar tickets. You just get like ten percent off two, three tickets. Dollar tickets. Yeah, they were fucking great. I went to like I think in like one month I went with Yolita like three different times to no, the no, no, Yankees game. That. You ain't getting that now. Nope, not getting that anymore. And I'd rather just hear about oh who won. Than to actually now sit and watch a game. I know. Trust me, I know. Because there's no, there's no point. Like the thri- the thrill of what we used to have, they kind of. I think it's also because of the rule changes as well. Mm-hmm. You know, you um, like back with wrestling, we used to like hit people with chairs and fucking falling from like giant steel cages mm-hmm. and breaking their bodies and stuff. You don't get that anymore. Nope. And. I get it. Like, you don't want, like, wrestlers to die and stuff. Like, things doing dangerous stunts like that anymore. But that's what we were on. You know, that's what we were spoiled by. I'll say that. I'll say that's what we were spoiled by. You know why? Because, like, they are independent contractors. Mm -hmm. I just found that out. I didn't know that shit. You know, you told me that shit. So, you know, they're, in, in my opinion... Through the evolution of the game and due to the fact that they can't use steroids, you know, like I know, I know steroids, the steroid 
epidemic kind of fucked up the wrestling world. You know what I mean? Like the whole shit with Vince. Everybody was taking steroids. Vince got he was getting accused of it, sued of it. And no, nobody's on steroids. But all of a sudden, all the athletes started deflating. Hmm. All the athletes just started deflating out of nowhere. Look, I'm gonna be honest with you, and I don't think I don't think that I'm not gonna say that them taking steroids is gonna. Uh, make, make them go harder or affect their character or want to entertain better. But I will say this. They, there are people in this world that sh- should be allowed due to profession or due to, let's say, a healthy growth. I want to I be the best that I can be. I want to obtain the best that I can obtain, whether it be to entertain people on TV, such as, come on, you're not going to tell me the Hulk wasn't on roids back in the days. You're not going to tell me all the, they all were. You know, so like, you want to, whether it be on an entertainment level or a sportsman level, you know, I would love to see, I would love to, I would love a place where people were allowed to take steroids and fight. I would love that shit. Where you could be as big as you want to fucking be, two, three, four, fucking hundred pounds, like this with these big muscles like this, and you could fight another nigga that big. I would love to see that shit. Take all the fucking drugs. They used to have that. It's called pride. They used to have that in Japan, actually. It, it, it was called pride, where, where fighters of all different sizes and shapes would fight each other. And the goal was you not just kill the other person. And you, you know, like, it's not due to, like I said, evolution and growth. We don't allow our athletes to take steroids. We don't allow our athletes to take performance-enhancing drugs. So, in a sense, we don't allow our athletes to become the supreme being that they want to become. There's a reason why things are put on this earth, created, made. There's a reason why there's clinics. There's a reason why there's scientists. There's a reason why there's doctors to tell you how to perform things on your body in a healthy way, such as injections, such as, you know, to not get like roid rage, because I don't know nothing about that. I don't know nothing about my testicles shrinking. I don't know. But those are all rumors that happen in that world. We don't really know that. Because I'm pretty sure that there's people with money or whatever under the guidance of doctors that take the proper fucking amount of steroids and them niggas are fucking getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Problem is they can't perform at anything because they they don't allow performance enhancing drugs in sports. And I think that I think they somewhere somebody should bend that rule somewhere. I mean, even if it costs the harm of the person. Again, again. Um, two things to that question. Like, I'm not saying do it irresponsibly. I'm not saying go sit there and inject yourself with a million steroids. I'm saying, yes, at least have that much that you've been getting steroids under the guidance of this this area, and it's signed off on. Yeah, we've like been a, giving like a harm reduction center. Yeah, like 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 no, just a place to do it properly. Like a mat, like uh, if crack was if crack was legal and they had a place to go smoke crack, yeah. fucking legally, like like that. that. They, they those are called harm reduction centers. Yeah, I don't know what like that. You know, have that. For Blasio ste- try to put that in. Have that for steroids. You know what I mean? Have that for steroids. You know, have that for cocaine. Have that for have that for because people are gonna do it regardless. And and the fact that they do it unhealthy is why people die. Is why people do fuck. You know what I mean? And then also we like things like fentanyl. There's the difference between having like the medical fentanyl that you get at like hospitals, and then the street fentanyl that's the one that kills you. I know. And they, I remember like I said, like the Blasio was trying to make harm reduction says It's like okay, we know we can't really stop users from using, but maybe we can try to have a place where they can go and use it safely instead of just. Using it like on the street and being like laid the fuck out and like you don't know if they're like dead and calling EMS. And- It'll never work though. You know what's weird? Marijuana is still a Schedule One drug. That's because of Nixon. That's based on racism. But look, it doesn't matter who's. It's because of how do we how do we how do we live in a country where blatantly something is blatantly wrong with that law. And we're going to, you know why they leave, they do it on purpose. It's purposeful. I kind of feel like it's to still maintain control over the situation. Yeah, go ahead. Open your grow houses. Sell your weed. Get your license. 
It's still illegal. It's still a Schedule One drug in the United States of America. We can still come through, double down on the Schedule One shit, and take your shit back. Don't get too crazy and too hype right now. We can still take your shit from you. That's what I think that is. Like it, it, it's control at, at its finest. I mean, but that's how America always is. Yeah, it sucks. I love America. Any, it's like anything that's America. good. It's like anything that's good. They want to kind of kill it in the cradle before it grows. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh. like with marijuana, there's like so many benefits that can come out of it if you actually do proper testing and be able to innovate and expand off it. That can actually help pro- possibly humanity. They try doing like trial tests even with like veterans of war when they were having trouble with their PTSD and give them like marijuana just so they can fucking sleep at night, just so they can be able to go outside, just so they can be able to eat. And the government's like, no, we don't want to invest in programs that would possibly cause harm to our veterans. But it's like, you'll have a veteran Congress say, look, without fucking marijuana, I'll I'll probably be dead. Because every night I can't sleep. I can't sleep because I think of all those fucking helicopters fucking aiming guns at people that I'm going to kill. Boom, bang, bang, boom. The only way I could truly calm down and all that shit goes away is when I'm high. When I'm I'm in a calm space and I can actually get a full eight hours sleep instead of thirty hour, thirty minute pre long times, thirty minute presets throughout the whole night because I'm scared. I'm scared to go to sleep. So I felt that he felt like there should have been there should be regulations and there should be some type of testing. You know, start it off in one aspect and see how it works. And if it's successful, then you expand it to other aspects. But it'll never work like that. I know it would never work like that. I know that for a fact. It's it too can't easy. Be that simple. It's. I can't. Yeah, we just said it. It can't be that simple. Yeah. Anything well, that's beneficial to society will never be easy. It makes no sense, though. Right. You know, it makes no sense, though. Like gun control. You think everybody should have a gun? Yo, bro, this dude, this dude, uh, Mexican OT on Schultz. He said, uh, Schultz was like, "Do you feel different when you ride in New York?" He's like, "Hell yeah." Say why? He said because I can't. I don't have my strap. Can't have your strap and shit like that. Like he's like, what do you mean? He's like, Yo, down in Texas, he got a strap. He got a strap. He got a strap. I don't go nowhere with my strap. He said I go to church with my strap. And Schultz would start laughing. He's like, no, you don't. He's like, he said, yo, bro, just just not too long ago, two people were arguing, and the dude, the dudes that had beef, they came to the funeral and, with straps, and they took the casket. He was like, I don't go nowhere without my strap. In Texas, every single person got a gun. And 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 you're going to ask me, do I think every single person should? That's like saying, is every single person in Texas smart? And I'm not saying they're dumb. I have nothing to do with that. I'm just saying, you know, by, by proportion, you know, you're going to have some dumb people in Texas too. That shouldn't be having guns, right? You're going to have dumb people everywhere. You know what it is? You know what it is? Gun control. Gun control is like, uh, 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 it's, it's, it's the same thing that we just mentioned about like simple society. You know, with gun control, it's very, very, very easy. The the problem that we, we have is that we have no control over the situation, Rich. We don't, we don't have control of like who has the guns. We don't have control of what the guns do when they're in the possessions of the people that they're in possession with. Like, but that's what well, you would need some type of gun control. But they like, don't. What are you? Who are you giving a gun to? No, no, no. But but that it's the same thing. They need cowboys. Need Indians, and I don't mean that in any way. But cops need robbers. They need us to have guns. If we don't have gun, look, Australia don't have guns. Australia don't have guns. Their society of no guns, mm-hmm. and they're a, they're a jail society in their society with no guns. So it is possible not to have guns, but they need us to have guns. They need something to do. Because it, it, if that wasn't the case, the UK don't got guns. What? The UK don't got guns. <sighs> Again, I, I it's possible. You know what? They got knives. It's, they have a big knife war over there. But my point is that it is possible to be in a gunless society. Yeah. You know, it's but they 
Our government needs us to have guns. When you have things in the Second Amendment saying like right to bear arms and leaning on laws, I think that's also what's also degrading. It's the fact that, oh, I want to make change about this thing. And it'll be some asshole and some some legislation going like, oh, no, we can't do that. We can't do that. There's laws. There's a reason why this law was made. And this is why we can't change it. It's like, you know, laws can be changed or taken out, like override other laws. For example, go Plessy versus Ferguson. Go based on racism. Pretty much separate but equal clause. Okay. You know, blacks can live among whites, but they have to live in a separate society. They have to live in a world where there's colors only, whites only areas, restaurants, bathrooms, hotels, etc. At one point, a little there was a little girl that had to walk almost nine miles to school, a black school, when there was a school barely two blocks from her house. But it was an all-white school. I believe that, though. That... And you know what that ended up being? What? Brown versus Board of Education. Why is it fair for my daughter that I got to walk almost nine miles to school when there's a school two blocks away? <clears throat> see. And overall, Presley versus Ferguson. But see, but, but see um, there's such things as losing battles, too, though. Did I lock them out? No, I didn't. Good shit. Um, Joey Lamb's in the building, by the way. Joey Lamb's in the fucking building. Let's change this conversation. Let's talk about happy shit. These niggas going to Japan. They're going to um, Osaka, right? I got yeah. it right this time. Hey, yo, to a yo-yo, the world yo-yo. What? More drinks, yeah. Where are you going? He don't need no more fucking sugar. Yes. I need all the sugar. I need the fucking sugar. Fucking guy. Yo, where are you going? You want a ginger ale? I got, I got my prime. Thank you, sir. That ginger ale's banging, though. I sell that with Pepsi. That's ginger ale? I love the way Spanish people say it. Ginga. Spanish people say ginga. Ginga el. Ginga. Yo, so 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 what's this trip looking like? Talk to him. You ready to eat some food that's still alive? You ready to get dildos out of vending machines? You ready to fucking you ready to see you ready to not sleep because there's gonna be so many goddamn people. It's the it's the third most dense populated city in the world, Nick. And it's also one of the safest cities in the world. So they say. So they say. You go walk around at night anywhere and, and you could wind up disappearing. I don't give a fuck. I mean, that's for anywhere, but it's like, for me being Osaka, I will say this, though. To make me I will say this, though. You like you like 6'1, right? 6'2. They're going to think I'm Stefan Marbury's son or some shit. Nah, they go, nah, they might think that you play ball or something because they go, oh, they're short. Look at, yeah, look at they're you. pretty short out there. They're like, what, five, 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 five six? They're the pretty man. short out there, little Asian dudes. Well, actually, a tall Asian. Like, My nigga, but they be having crazy shit. In, yo, I be seeing crazy shit in Japan. They be having like, uh, I'm going sideways. They be having like, um, like sex things outside. Well, you put your, your your dick in an ass or something like that, and they fucking make you come. They be having stalls like that, B. They have stalls like that over there, B. I don't know. I gotta. Per- Let me I gotta see. I'm gonna look this shit up. Yo, you gonna go? You gonna go to the geisha house? A geisha houses though? No, Come on, why y'all being punks, no. B? They're not gonna fuck you. They're gonna walk around naked. They're gonna massage your back. They're gonna pour hot water on you. <laughs> Then tell her that. Just look at her. You don't gotta <laughs> just look at fuck. So, um. pay, pay pay some money. And just sit and talk with her for an hour, <laughs> like a therapy section with her. <laughs> but I think with those, even when there's some regulations, like I don't think you could just like go to one. I think you have to be like kind of ordained or invited to go to those type of places. I don't think it's just like open air. Like, hey, come over here and let's get some naked bitch to massage you or some shit. Yeah, it's not like that. I think there's like some regulations with that. And I don't think they would have it in the touristy part of Osaka. I mean, because you, you know, you still gotta have kids. You know, you got Universal Studios there. So why the fuck would you have like a, what, a geisha house like not not too far from there? Yeah, like you know, yo, they got there. some shit. Yeah, some real fun there. They got some shit called boys bars. <laughs> boys I'm looking bar? at boys bars. I like yo. They got girls bars, boys bars. The muscle bar. Oh, God. He just tell me about muscle bars in Osaka. Well, Ready? I don't know if it's in Osaka. I don't think it's in Osaka. Okay, what, what, it's in Japan. Bar? All right, long story. Oh, you want to explain it? Pick him up. Uh, pick him up. Bar with, with barley 
with brolic ass chicks that want to talk to you. That want to talk to me? Are they a gay? All right, picture Hooters, but with muscle bitches. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. That's their job. Yeah. yeah. That's their job. Um, brolic bitches? Oh. They, they make the I'm a freak, son. I'm going to be honest <laughs> with you. Yeah. Yeah, see? <laughs> I don't know. He'll be like, don't tell me with a good time, baby. <laughs> I don't know. You know what it is? Because, like, sometimes them bitches with them fucking, sometimes them bitches with those bodies be having crazy vaginas. They vaginas got muscles that you never even witness. You're like, can you let go of my dick? And she's like, okay. Yeah, he like, <laughs> like yeah. yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah, yo, all right. I was squeezing kind of hard right there. Like, ow. ow. I, I, I dated a chick Sticks that was like a, a, fort, a like a chick. grip, like those shits. I dated a, I dated a, um, a, like, I dated two chicks before that were like a little bit on the muscular, muscular side. And, and, and they were, they were athletic too. Like one played ball and, 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 and baseball. And then the other one, uh, she pushed bread around. She went to the gym too. Like she was athletic too. But when you when you, I will say when you wrap your arms around those women, that's when the beard on the face situation comes back. Like like you know like, you it's one nigga? thing if the bitch is ugly and she's sucking your dick. It's another thing if she ugly and got a beard and sucking your dick. You know what I'm saying? Like, because when you when you go to hold those women, right? When you go to hold those women, you. Like, damn, bitch, your back better than mine, yo. Like, <laughs> but it's insecure about you, so like. But I, I, but I like, I like women with nice backs, though. I oh, do yeah, me like too. The guilty, That's the only way dresses with the guilty back. Confessions. Open I like, I like that. I like that. Not, not, not NFL linebacker back, but like you know, some muscles in that bitch. I, I take that, you know. Oh, I, yeah. I do like a, a athletic woman, though. I don't like a, I don't like a woman that's just like frail or don't. You know, like I mean, some you gotta have something to grab, not just like you can't be like not not even dope. grab. I don't like fat bitches. I'm saying I like an athletic woman. What's like what's wrong with fat bitches? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with fat bitches. I didn't say none of that. I'm saying that your preference is not fat bitches. If if I got with a chick right and she was a little bit on the heavy side, how heavy? I'm. It don't matter. It I'm with matter. her. It, I, it don't matter. I love her. There's Yoko do, Zuna. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm saying manageable heavy. I'm saying manageable heavy, bro. I'm talking about, I'm talking about like you know, she can't be double me. She can't be double me. That's all I'll say. She could be half, half. She could be me plus half. Okay, me plus. Say she was like two hundred pounds and shit, and I, no problem. I'm getting that right into shape. I'm getting that right into shape. But if she don't want to do it, if she don't want to do it, I'm. That's when I leave her. Like if I'm with a chick. I don't give a fuck how fast she is. I'm not, I don't give a fuck your weight. Don't, don't bother me. What bothers me is what you do after. Like, what you do after. If I fell in love with you for you, then it is what it is. But if you're not willing to take steps in the direction to lose some weight because you're comfortable being 230 and shit, laying like a fucking beach dwell on the fuck, you want to go to the beach. I'm not going to the beach with you. Hmm. You all over the beach. <laughs> like uh, I'm not going to the beach with <laughs> you. You <laughs> fucked up. I, no, but see, but you see, but you see, I'm not fucked up because I'm being honest. If I love that chick, I'm gonna tell that chick, baby, we'll go to the beach next year when you look better. When you look better, yo, you want to go to the beach? You gotta earn that beach. We're gonna earn that beach together. You know what I'm saying? But I'll do it with her. We'll go lose that weight. We'll look good. With we'll... shit, you don't gotta lose the weight. Don't matter. I'll do it with you because I want you to look good with me. I want my chick to look good with me. It's not, I don't give a fuck if she's fat. I don't give a fuck about that. What concerns me is when people aren't motivated to do something better with their bodies. Like, if I dated a chick right now, and she was like, you know, son, you got to put some weight on you. I'm going to be like, all right, I guess I got to go to the gym and get some muscles. But if she's like, no, you, I like I like a nigga with a little bit of belly. I'm going to be like, here's my man, Rich. Go to LA. <laughs> I'm not going to go ahead and put a belly on you. Nah, and and that's what I say about comfortability. Some people don't admit. Some fat people enjoy being fat. Yep. Some fat people just enjoy being fat, and it's nothing wrong with it. It's nothing wrong with it, because not every fat person is unhealthy. I joke around on the pod, and I talk mad shit. Lizzo was unhealthy. She's the only fat oh, person God. I assume that's unhealthy. He has like but a listen. whole personal vendetta against Lizzo. <laughs> listen. Every listen. time she comes up, he just like goes listen, off. Listen, besides that, besides that, I honestly think that 
It's not about how you look. Oh, you're about the allegations with Lizzo? That well, yeah, 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 yeah. She was she was a good good transition. She was um supposed to be she's like fat shaming and making right? people do sex things. She's- like Supposedly, she, they went to she, like some no. bar where they shot a banana well, she was, out of her pussy. She was skinny shaming, though. I think they said she was Yo, skinny shaming. fat shaming, too. Oh, and fat shaming. I, fat, Mainly fat shaming. That's cheating. You can't be fat and fat shaming. That's, 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 that's like being Asian and calling another Asian a chink. My stepfather used to do that shit all the time in the car when he's driving on Main Street. You're fucking chink. And I'm sitting there confused. I'm like... <laughs> she, they, there's like a lawsuit with, I think, three of them that they're bringing to you know, court. And I guess they want some type of compensation. Like they got inappropriately fired for being fat shamed, being forced to go to like like sex the sex club thing. Allegedly, like they were shooting bananas and out of the vagina, and they had to like eat it or something. They like, all take a bite, yeah, and shit, like crazy shit. And it, I think it happened in, like Amsterdam in the UK when they went allegedly one time. Yo, listen, I'm gonna tell you one thing. That's bad staff. You know what you're getting into with these superstars. You know, you're on tour. She's taking you out to a nightclub. Think about it. She's taking you out with her. You ain't got to go. She ain't putting no gun to no, your head. I felt peer pressured. She, don't, you're a grown, you're a grown, fungu. You're a grown ass person, bro. You're a grown ass whole person, son. There's no peer pressure that you could put, that somebody could put on you at that point. Like, you're already living your dream in another place, doing what you're doing, uh, surrounded by a celebrity superstar is going to cut you a check. You already checked out boxes. Now at that point to say it's peer pressure when the leader of the cult wants to be like, come on guys, let's go do some freaky shit. Now it's peer pressure? No. you you get, These people got their own choices and decisions to make. You're the CEO of your life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you, 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 can't, you can't do that at some point. But I will say this. If I was in their shoes, I would have went. I would have enjoyed it. I, I probably would have caught one of the bananas that were flying out of a vagina or something. But, Fucking took a but you're, chew. But you're a different monster. Took These a bite like, out of it. Nah, well, you know what it is? a virgin. You only, you only, you only, so what? A virgin? If you don't want to. Yeah, that's my point. That I'm saying I would do it because I'm there for a good time. I'm with this fat bitch, Lizzo. You know what I mean? She's she's over it. I'm over it now. She knows how I feel about her. She she knows I know she's going to give me some sloppy top before this night is over. That's the only, only reason I'm here right now. You know what I mean? Because she's like, you think I'm fat, nigga? I'm going to show you what this fat bitch do. And I'm over here like, I'm all for it. You know what I mean? I'm in there catching. I'm in there doing everything. Like, psh, whatever you need me to do, girl. And she cutting the check because I'm there living my dream, doing my job, chilling with fucking Lizzo, about to get my dick sucked. They should have just enjoyed the moment. You know what I mean? They, they truly, they truly, now you, now, like I said, bad staffing. At the end of the day, you always got to worry about, like, remember when Tom Cruise blew up on the set and he was cursing all everybody out? Ah, fuck this. I paid all this money for this fucking production. You mean nothing. You mean nothing. This is... He's right. He's right. Look at it. Look at that SAG situation. It goes to show you. Niggas that are rich are rich. Niggas that are broke are broke. The niggas that are yeah. rich. You already the, went off the last episode. Niggas that, that are, but my point girl, is that, that niggas that poor with girl trying to make an honest living. Niggas that are rich call shots, and that's my point. You know what I'm saying? If you rich and you got money, you gonna call the shot. And Lizzo, at the end of the day, she just got bad staffing. You, you shouldn't. You gotta watch who you hire. You can't. You can live as free as you want, but there's a reason why celebrities live around celebrities, or they live in anonymity. They either live by themselves somewhere, like Mark Anthony on his island sniffing coke, you know what I'm saying, or or they or they go ahead and they live the lavish lifestyle on the streets, and beefing and fighting and all that shit assumes, you know what I'm saying? Live love and hip hop life. Yo, I I was fucking I, I was listening to uh, what's this dude that was on Adam Twenty Two, D Rec, the nigga that fought um China Mac. Who fought China oh, AD. Man? AD. There you go. He was on a pod. He was on a pod with uh. I met China Mac. Shout out to China Mac. He's my right my here. arch nemesis, academics. Oh, you had seen the thing with academics? Um, uh, wait, we, we'll finish your thing out. Go, yeah, but now nah, he was on there and he was just talking about the whole Adam situation and yo Adam called cops on him and he was just you, you got to see the pod. It's just like wow, you come into a business with somebody and Adam got it. You know, you I made this business. It's called Adam Twenty Two. It's called No Jumper. But these moving parts that are part of the business, how do you not honor them? And then how do you like Adam would brag about the money he's cutting 
the checks that he's cutting, but yet his his the people that are making the wheels work aren't getting a piece of the. How would you loudly like? It was just so crazy that. Things can go sour that quickly with the wrong staffing. That really goes to show you you don't know your friends. Like, you would think they would they built that fucking it's sad to see, bro. You know, and at the same time, yeah, cool for AD and all them. They started community and they got their all own fan base and now their their growth is exponential from that stuff like that. But shit, yo. It had to be really ugly before it became like something beautiful again. And it was already working good, you know, but I, I knew it. Everybody sees it about AD22. He's a dirty culture vulture. He's like a dirty culture vulture. Like, he, 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 there's something about him that so gives he off. A biker. He gives, but he gives off devilish fucking vibes to me. I don't know what the fuck it is. Like, he's here to pollute our, our eyes or ears. Like, he's here to pollute. Yeah, like, he's here to pollute our hip hop. Adam 22 seems like he's here to pollute. Come on, like I know we've been fucking since the beginning of time, but hip hop kind of hip hop kind of like Remember Superhead? Oh yeah. Okay. Superhead was just a porn star, right? But hip hop really brought out now hip hop niggas fuck porn bitches, right? And bring them out. Look what he does. He fucks porn bitches. Look what he interviews niggas. He does the fucking what 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 what's the other dude's name that interviews niggas and 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 they tell their story on his fucking um platform? Vlad. He yeah. does the Vlad thing, except he does it more in depth because he's on camera, and he's looking at you, and then he he has people that are also make the guests feel comfortable. When he had a AD, when he had D Rep, when he had these niggas make make guests feel comfortable, so guests will talk their life and speak speak what they want, you know, like and then he he, porn bitches, you know. Let's call a spade a spade. They're having sex because that's what they get paid to do. Um, there's nothing about what he did when he fucked porn bitches that is crazy to... He just did what we've been doing for a very long time and put it on camera. And then asked them what's their favorite food and favorite color. Uh, he made a show of blood talk. Yeah, that's what I'm saying though. Like, But he's taken everything that hip-hop has already done, used it for himself, and made millions of dollars off of it. But he isn't hip hop. As I said, he gives me devilish vibes. He gives me weird vibes now. Now when I look at him, I try like cause I used to listen to No Jumper. But now when I try to listen to it, I can't. My ears are like, they get the they, the ringing noise. Like turn this shit off, bro. You're getting he's getting you. He's pulling you to the dark side. He's lost a lot of viewership. Of too. course, because look at how he treated his people. Look, how you, you can't treat your people like that, bro. You can't treat your... I can't... Look, attitude reflects leadership. This is something that I speak of in my house. Amongst my people. Amongst my family. Amongst people I'm trying to move with. Listen, attitude reflects leadership. And that don't only mean from the leader's perspective. If you guys got a fucking attitude problem, it affects the leader too. The leader got to learn how to deal with it. But when the leader got an attitude problem, you guys are absolutely affected. So it's attitude reflects leadership. The only way to move forward with things is to actually like have a straight, clear path on what the resolution is. Yeah, nah. You, 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 it's, 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 I don't like repetitiveness. And, and that's one thing that you see in, I'll, I'll, t- I'll just throw fl- family out there. You got that uncle that fucking keeps doing the same shit. He 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 calls you the same name all the time, or he he always has the same joke all the time, or or, or he always he's always out of line in the same way. After he had that one too many beers, he's always out of line in that same fucking way, right? You 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 have people like that. You have those family members. When are you gonna change? Never. No, that's bullshit. No. That's bullshit. They don't change. That's bullshit. They don't change. That's bullshit. Uh, how? That's bullshit. How? No, no, no. I agree with you. Oh. I agree with you. But that, but that's why, but that's why I try to tell you, attitude reflects leadership. How the fuck do you want me to be better around you, with you, for you, if you're not being better for the circumstances of the situation? Yo, Shun, if I've been dealing with with a person for five years, we shouldn't be having the same arguments. That's my thing. If I've been dealing with something for five years, we shouldn't be having the same arguments. We should be arguing about something different if there is an argument to be had. 
And that that's where I like I that's what makes me trim fatter with people in my life anyway. There's a reason why I'm distant from people I love. Cause y'all niggas be doing the same bullshit. Fuck you want me to do? You want me to sit here and put this face on like it's cool? Cause behind it I'm fucking tweaking. I'm tweaking over like, come on, bro, you gonna do this again? You did this last time. You did you come on, you just literally did, 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 you didn't learn the did, did. And, but they're like, no, no, my bad. All they can do is say, I know, I'm sorry. And they're not. What were you saying before about um Ak? Oh, there's beef with Erica Badu. Why? Because. He better chill, bro. I, he gonna get smacked up by me, but you better not come after my, yo, Ak, where you at? Ak, yo, son, I'm gonna get you one day, son. You ain't gonna get Ak. I'm gonna get you one day, son. You're not gonna get Ak. You said we could pull up. He, he gives you the Addy and nobody pulls up. <laughs> I don't want. I don't because want to be with that he nigga. He knows it's gonna be fucking cops or some crazy. Nah, he don't. He 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 he, he said something. I'm I'm gonna give him his. I'm gonna right. give him his his flowers. Right. Before so pretty you... much the shorthand of it is. Go ahead, go. You got um, the argument. Like, remember that everyday struggle episode that Erica Badu was on, and she pretty much held a joke for the entire segment. Ended with calling academics looking like Jerry Mouse. Okay. He pretty much held all that shit here for like five six years. It just went off. Like, fuck the Eric I'll do type shit. <laughs> After holding that in for like almost six years. Really? And he pretty much went the fuck off. Wait. I was just about to give him a compliment, though. Wait, I was, and forget it now. Yeah. See what I'm saying, Ak? Fuck Wait, you, no. Ak. He's saying, yo, Eric Abadu, please get an academic. Wait. I guess academic, so he found this film on Everyday Struggle. This rant was very... Wait, but Shout out the guy that you're, you're playing it from, too. Shout out to Chick... Chicks move. I love his pace. Shout out to I Chicks move, bro. You keep my name out your mouth too. I see you mention. Listen, that old everyday struggle shit. That was another era, my nigga. I'm down to volley all you niggas these days. Fuck what y'all got going on. Yeah, that's Henny Ack. You don't mention my name, please. I'm, I'm just, that's I'm Henny Ack. I'm fuck with you, neither. Just, 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 bro, I'm on really disrespectful timing. You niggas got to show me. Facts. That's Henny Ack. Got to show me. All that little say shit you got going on don't ain't fuck with me. Straight up. I'm telling all y'all this because I don't respect y'all. I, I would like to let all y'all know I don't respect y'all. I don't respect y'all like you. I don't respect me. Because when I met all y'all, y'all all try to play me. I never fuck with Erica Badu after she came on my show and she was trying to be funny. Bitch, I don't fuck with you after that. Nigga, what's up now? What we finna do? Bitch, you an old asshole just keep getting fucked by all these young niggas who's popping. What we finna do? I ain't fuck with none of y'all niggas. Still. Bitch, call Tyrone, call Jamal, call everybody. Big Ack is here. None of y'all niggas ain't finna do shit, my nigga. I'm telling all y'all the real about it. I see that bitch follow me. I'm like, bitch, why you following me? I don't fuck with you. I'm not in on no joke with you. You and your little Twitter following or whatever the fuck you got. Bitch, you came up in here sh- raving around Sage and all, all that right, shit. All right, let, let Henny Ack go. I don't hear that right. shit. <laughs> Fucking weirdo. <laughs> Fucking weirdo. He's the only nigga in the yo. He's a, he's a he's a he's a he's a he's the greatest internet gangster I've ever met, son. He's the only nigga on the internet that has no credit on the streets, but you would think has the most credit in the world. Like I don't know how he manages to do it because, like I said, I was gonna give him a compliment though because from the his reporting standpoint, as a reporter, when you wanna, when you go back and listen to Chirac, he was like. Talking shit about niggas that he don't even know. He was he was he was replaying it back like 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 he gave it no sensitivity when he reported on Chirac. Now, when you see him doing something like you see the Adam Twenty Two video where Lane of the Plugs getting fucked by Rico, mm. he's doing it voiceover over that, mm. and he's treating it like oh, a yeah. football game or yeah, something. Yeah, that was that was pretty funny. But you you see you see what he's doing there. You see how he's doing that? that? That was pretty funny. That that right there, that right there, that right there is classic for me. That's how act. That's how act should be. And and I'll give him. I'll give him that because his reporting too lately has been a little bit more sharper. But the Henny act right there. That's I don't like that about act. That's one thing I don't like. What there's the, no reason. There's no reason to. I like Henny act though. Everybody does. And look, I mean, I get it. I mean, but for him to hold. That type of grudge, but something that was pretty much nothing, a nothing burger to like everybody else around and heard. No, 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 no. He knows how to make. He, he, he's not stupid, bro. He has this little book of grudges. 
Oh, yeah. And he knows how to make it more than what it really is. He's not <laughs> stupid. He knows how to use his platform, his fans. He knows who his fan base is. He knows that Heniac, look what you just said, I like Heniac. He knows who his fan base is. <laughs> so he's not dumb as far as how to perform for y'all. He's a performer. That's what that was. That's a performance right there. Because you see Ack in the streets and all that shit. My nigga, Eric Badu walking around with like four or five big niggas. I don't think he's going to have that energy and walk up to her and say all that to her face. All that he's going to say from his comfort of his home. But to say it to her face, I don't think Ack will have the balls to do something like that. He never did. Never does. And she did, she did, she did respond too. What she said? It's not, it's not. She's like, I hurt somebody's feelings about five, six years ago, and she's a gangster. Look how she responded. I know I hurt somebody's feelings five, six years ago. Man. I just want to apologize. And then, she, and then she flipped it and made. She has like an incense that of her, of her kitty. Okay, as he called it, Jerry Mouse. So she pretty much flipped the Jerry Mouse joke and made it like a product, like a it says Jerry Mouse edition. You should better watch that. You. She better watch that. It sold out. There was money. like a, a thousand people bought it. Yeah, act don't want that money real quick. But that's what you're supposed to do, though. You see that? Like, she's smart, and and I'm not gonna say he's not smart neither, because it it did what it had to do. On I bet you he got views on that. I bet it got attention on that. I just I I just I give him credit. He's calculated. He ain't dumb. He picks the beasts with the right people. You know what I'm saying? He picks beasts with people that are really, really far away from him. People that can't really fucking like my song. Shit. Put put hands on him or people that don't want to lose. Still goes on. Him. People don't want to lose their civil liberty though. You know, at the end of the day, the reason I got off being on the internet so much is because of that. Like, I don't want to be just those people that just like talk shit all the time. I talk shit with you on the pod. This is fun. It's cool. But like to do it on a daily basis, the way some people have committed themselves to be involved in other people's lives and be a reporter. Everybody's a fucking reporter on everybody else's life now. That's what the internet. That's what you internet influencers like. Not not, not all of them. Not all of them. Because some of you guys do shit to make people move and laugh. But sometimes it'd be mad annoying. Like. Yo, I get angry when I see the niggas in a fucking store and he, he sees the chick and he goes, to the chick, there you got a fat ass while she's with her man. And then the man reacts and goes, yo, I'm joking, bro. It's a prank. It's a prank, bro. It's a prank. Nigga, that's not a prank. Like, why you do that to people? Why, why, why fuck with people and then call it a prank? And then I look at the views and it's like half a million views. It did what it had to do. Hmm. You know, this. I, I, don't, I don't condone that shit, though. I don't like that shit at all. I don't like... I don't like the 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 trash that gets on the internet. Hmm. You understand? Like it's one thing for the stuff that makes you laugh, makes you feel better. You know, it's one thing to learn, but there's mad shit that be trashy on the internet, and and it, it's cringy sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like I'll be watching this website called uh, what's it called? Shit happens, or something like uh, crazy shit. Hmm. Crazy shit happens. I watch something like. Call crazy shit on Twitter. There's like a whole Twitter of crazy shit that goes on. Yo, this world is sick, my nigga. People chopping off people's heads, people's hands. Like, yo, oh man. I, my friend sent me a video of that a long time ago. I still got it. I saw a dude getting robbed on a motorcycle. He was with his chick, and another guy on a motorcycle pulls up and goes to rob them. The minute the robber jumped on the guy's bike and went to pull off, the guy that was getting robbed pulls out a big ass gun and shoots him like six times in the back of the head. Doom, 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 doom. Fuck off my bike, nigga. And that's like everyday living for them. Nigga, that's everyday living for them. That shit's nothing 24 for hours a day. Yup, yup, yup. Mm. I couldn't imagine, you know, and that's why, like... Oh. That was you? Yeah. Oh. I couldn't imagine. I was like, that's creepy. I couldn't imagine, like, um, living in that world, that barbaric world. You know what I mean? Like, we soft, son. People born in the United States is soft, B. We didn't have to go through. We don't go through what fucking people go through in third world countries. Yeah, we go through financial struggle. Yeah, we go through like. We hate our government. We hate our government. And yeah, some, you know. It ain't like North Korea bad or fucking. Yeah, we ain't like. America has poor people that are obese. (laughs) Right. Yeah, we we got some homeless people that are really fat, son. I was like, how that works. I think yeah. they get, but I mean, just because 
Just because you don't have a home don't mean you can't get food. I mean, I guess so. Because food's everywhere. They we we're the most wasteful of food in any country on earth. We throw away, I think, about like two hundred billion tons of food a year. Yeah, now we do. We do. I was in the store the so, other day. Sometimes we have free food and we still throw it away to people that actually need it. Yeah, now I was in Seven Eleven the other day and the dude was throwing out a whole pie of pizza and I was like, "You're throwing that out?" He's like, "I have to." The fucking the health department is time limit. And I was like, "Shit, I'll take it." He was like, "You gotta buy it." What? I said, "You can't." He said, "Nah, we we scan so we scan it out. We gotta throw it out. We're not allowed to give out this food. It's garbage. It's not allowed to be sold." And 7-Eleven is not allowed to give anything out. So he can't give out the pizza but, that he's about to throw out. Yeah, that's um, something that they try passing legislation mm-hmm. where when people now when they do that, it can be like a, a charitable donation. So it could be a tax write-off for their business. Yeah, but what the fuck is a fucking... I mean, if they did it in bulk... I think Prep it's a, I, it. th- there's, there's mad companies that do pick up leftover food yeah. from places yeah. and all that shit. Like Predator Major, they make their food in the day and then at night they just leave like a whole bag of like food out in the street. Like there'll be like about four or five big bags of food that they don't want to go to waste, but they they get a benefit, a tax benefit from that. Like homeless people can go get food, whatever. But it's like after a certain hour. I mean, I could I could see myself doing some shit like living in my car for a year. Mm-hmm. Like if I had a van, I could I would I would so if I had a van, I would so spend a year tricking it out and then just go off the greed, 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 greed. You know what I mean? Like for that pizza, if for that, you could have just went, hey, just leave it nicely on the floor, and it's garbage at that point. You just pick it right back up. I'm not picking it up and eating it off the floor though. But it's in the box. It's not the pizza itself. This is true. This is true. This is true. But no, they had to no, they had to throw the pizza at the. He, if it's put it in the box, it's for sale. Get a get a nice clean bag. Pretend throw it out. And let yeah, the I should have brought the charity thing up. <laughs> I'm like, yo, son, I'm donating to charity. What's the name of your charity? I want some food. Because <laughs> like, I, I never understood like why I gotta pay for something if you're gonna throw it away out. Like that's wasteful food. That's food that can actually help like a family. That's somebody. Well, can help you know what I think more right businesses now. see, but I, I don't know. Like I think more more businesses should do though. Is have that back door though, have that back door so that people that are hungry, right? People that are hungry that maybe I can't afford a, a a nice big dinner for their family or can't, and and then at the at the same time, is it healthy to eat other people's foods? I think they didn't touch it. Only if they didn't touch it. What if they touch it? I mean, look at people on the team. It's like uh, when you have like. People eating sandwiches, like half half a sandwich still left, and they were gonna say when they get home, and then the homeless guy comes through and goes like, "I mean, it's a, have that? It, it is a mind fuck though, because look, if, if you if you buy the sandwich right, like this, this big, right, and you buy the sandwich right, if I just cut the piece that you bit and rewrap it, can't fucking tell that anybody bit it, right? No, you know what I'm saying? Like it is a mind fuck, but then you need a whole new station for every store of people making bags instead of just throwing food out. Because I agree with you, yo. Like I see a lot of wasteful. A lot of garbage, a lot of food, like, and I'm, I, I do feel bad because I'm like, damn, yo, I know I grew up, I'm just saying I grew up poor, but I had cheese food. sandwiches and mayo and tuna in a can, and I know some of my homies had it worse. Some of my homies had it worse, like them niggas had fucking, them niggas. We used to go to school and we used to split things because both of us be hungry. I look at, I'll be like, well, for real, I look at him on Monday. I'm like, yo, I got you today, my nigga. I got three dollars. And then he would come to me on Wednesday, like, yo, I got you today, buddy. I got four dollars, yo. And then we go get a sandwich somewhere and we'll fucking split it in half all the time because I sandwiches for three dollars. Hell yeah, nigga. I used to get a hot ham and cheese for three dollars. Hot ham and cheese for three dollars. Hot ham and cheese for three dollars, bro. That shit was lit, lit. Now that's just like what? Turkey and cheese for three dollars? What? Now that's just like six. And you know what? They used to taste better. They used to hit. A hot ham and cheese to hit. Now I get a hot ham and cheese and I'm like, mm. I don't feel like back in the day hot. Uh, it's not as special. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking crazy, but here's what it is. Like, I just like there's so much for society that can benefit from just just simple changes that can like help people, like with food, with housing, with health, and like psychiatric care. It's not gonna happen. It's it's just not gonna, not happen. gonna happen. That's how unfair, you know. Like Mexico, Me- look at Mexico. Mexico shouldn't be, yo, 
we shouldn't be getting all these fucking refugees. No, we shouldn't. I agree yo, with th- that. This, this is ridiculous. That's like this a ridic- hot topic now. This, like, this, why are they coming in this country? This, this, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. You know why they're coming in this country? I honestly think they come into this country to as a as a as a um as a like a veil. Like we can't see behind the veil. There's something else going on with our government. Everybody's getting older. All these people that are in power in our government are just getting older and dying. New people are coming into office. I think there's things going on. There's alien shit. You know what I mean? Like there's things going on with where allowing more people to come into our country is like just there's something behind that they're not allowing us to see. We had a woman in my work. Mm-hmm. Like she was a refugee and she purposely gave birth in our hospital just so she could try to be an American citizen because she gave birth in our hospital. Yeah. And that happens. Yeah. Probably frequently more than we know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of a lot of pregnant, a lot of don't. cultures, a lot of cultures have done that though. A lot of cultures when they when for if like look at Middle East. A lot of middle they come over here and they have their babies over here so the kids are American and they they have an, a, a citizenship hopefully or a better way to fight for their citizenship cuz they could say I had my kid on American soil. It's almost like you but still you should not be a war like I, I, it doesn't make sense for me. You know what it doesn't make sense for me that there's 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 jobs to be had right now, there's still there's still construction jobs. There's 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 jobs cleaning the roads. There's there's places where these people can learn. When you you know when you go to Ferrari driving school, right? So you want to get your CDL, you you get your CDL, they train you, and then after that you work for them for like a year, because they don't charge you no money up front. You got to work it. You work it off. So that's how they always get fresh employees in. Feel me? Mm-hmm. Always got fresh employees, new workers, and new people that know the job that are training for somebody to learn the job. They always keep it a fluctuation because they, they'll they teach you for free, give you the truck, you'll get the license, but you got to work for us for a little while. Mm-hmm. We're taking all these refugees in. The first thing that we f- should have fucking did is separate the fucking women and the kids. Separate the women and the kids. Boom. Y'all go that way. Give them something to do. Put the bitches in kitchens. All these Spanish women, they all cook. All these South American Spanish, all cook. All cook. I go to fucking Corona right now. There's eight, 15 different carts with fucking cow heads, milk, fucking pig heads, all these different type of tacos and churries. And they all cook. Take these bitches, throw them in kitchens. We need kitchens. We need people to work in kitchens. We need people to volunteer. This is how you're paying your dues to American society right now, women. Take those kids, throw them in school right away. Take those kids, get them educated to the American way right away. They're young kids. You want to nip it right now before they fall in line with the streets and have to be struggling and they they get with their cousin Pablo and become drug dealers or prostitutes. Like, I don't understand the American system. These things are laid out right there. If we're taking a whole bunch of new people, we're trying to make them Americans. The American way is not to... People get this misconstrued. People, In my opinion, people think the American way is be yourself as best as you can. That's an American. No, American... Like, we're supposed to help one another. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to do... We only got this far being getting better and better and better. Since we're letting all these people in, my nigga, we could be mad strong right now. Yo, take all those Mexican niggas, bro. Take all those South American niggas, bro. You know what you do? The ones that you can't find job placement for? Throw them niggas in fucking... Throw them niggas in fucking military. A lot of people don't want to join the military no more. Now it's military families. Now, now the military's third, fourth, fourth, fifth generation almost handed. Take these Mexican niggas, teach them American way. And I don't mean Mexican, niggas, I mean South American people. Teach them the fucking way. Throw, throw them in freaking, throw them in the military. Teach them an education, how to get smart. And now the military gets bigger and stronger. And now they're appreciative to be South American Americans because they're exiled from their country. They left. They're here now. They're Americans now. Teach them how to be American. I don't understand why we're fucking up so badly, bro. Mayor Adams is calling this a fucking sanctuary fucking state. And then he's like, no, 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 it's not. Fuck that. We took too many in. Come on, man. Like, I I think we got like 500,000 or 200,000, right? Mm -hmm. That's crazy, bro. And we don't got no, 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 we don't, we're just going to keep putting them in fucking next to high schools and next to elementary schools and next to fucking places where they should, they're not wanted and fucking abandoned hotel buildings. And, 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 and yo, I even saw a thing where volunteers and people were trying to bring food to the shelters to feed these people and the, and they turned them back. 
Our government turned them back, said, yo, 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 can't do that. We're giving them three meals a day. That's all they're getting. Is this prison? We're giving them three meals a day and snacks. We don't need your donations. People are trying to help. Government don't want... It's. I'm telling you, our government is fucked up, yo. It just really is, and it's sad. Because those people right there could be useful. Instead of us, we're hating them. Yo, we don't even know them. Think about it, my nigga. Those kids are going to go to school eventually with our kids. And now our kids are going to have a stigma about them. Oh, you guys are migrants. Oh, you're an immigrant? Are you you're Mexican? That's fucked up. We shouldn't do that. We should invite them in. You know what I'm saying? We should invite them to come fucking be part of our society. But instead, we're going to treat them like that. Remember when 9-11 happened? How everybody would treat Muslims? Mm-hmm. How e- still do, kind of? E- but not as not much. Not as bad as back No, then. no. We respect Muslims as far as like the ones with niggas you know, they get the money. They smart. They fucking educated. And their religion is very, very old. But when that happened, we confused it. And we just blame Muslim people. And it's automatically fucking a Muslim up. Because 9-11 happened. That wasn't just fucking... That wasn't the whole culture of fucking religion of people. But we were, we were made to hate them because of the way our government made us to hate them. It's going to do the same thing with these South American people. Because people already don't want them nowhere. We fucked up. We should have just put them in reform right away, B. What do you think you should do with them? I mean, I wouldn't know exactly because I'm not the one running this country. If you were. I wouldn't... You wouldn't even have took them. Not that I wouldn't took them. That I wouldn't know what to do if they got here. Oh, exactly. nah, nigga. I know right away, son. It's like the, the, the ideology of like having... Refor- it's like almost forced reformation. No. In a way, because they had something like that in Canada. No. They had to not like assimilate Native Americans into American it's sim- society. It's, it's, it's simulation, but it's not forced. That what, what, what Canada did to the Native Americans, what we did to Native Americans, no, that was forced. Mm-hmm. We're not forcing people that are coming to us for help. They're coming to the United States for help. The problem is, is what happens when the child don't got a mom and a dad. Mm-hmm. The child, let, let's, say, let's just say that. The child's free to learn from the streets, right? Mm-hmm. These streets aren't really forgiving anymore. They never were. If these South American people were our kids, we're abandoning them. They're coming to Mother America. And we're not giving them a mom or a dad. We're abandoning them. And they're going to learn from the streets. And it's going to be the same thing of us having people killing each other and having bodies all over the place, bro. That's the one thing that Spanish people know how to do good, nigga. Kill. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Yo, so when do you leave? When you come back? Talk to him. We're an hour in. I'm actually leaving uh, yeah, yeah, in roughly like 14 stretching. hours. My nigga needs to go to bed. Well, not right now. I, I'm going to probably take like a power nap. I'll sleep on the plane because it's going to be a long ass flight. So, but it's 11 11. My, my flight leaves at 125. I'm going to probably get the, I'm gonna get the Uber XL like around for 10. I want to get to the airport early uh-huh. just so I can like get there, settle in, and you know, just wait for the flight. Uh-huh. But, but yeah. Uh-huh. I'm tired. <laughs> Yeah, we got we got early. It's like a very early episode because right now we would have been probably starting. We wouldn't even probably start. We usually start at eleven thirty. Yeah, nah, I fucking I went to bed at two in the morning. But, no, I got home at two in the morning. Yeah, I went to bed at like two in the morning. But yeah, we fly out Monday and we're supposed to be there Tuesday afternoon. Nice, they're gonna greet you, treat you all nice. And then royalty, Wednesday, baby. So Wednesday would probably be the only free day where it's like we can actually like kind of explore. It. And Loyalty, then the con- baby. Then the contest itself is Thursday, well, Friday, but Thursday night they're throwing a party, like a yo-yo players party, like a pre-party thing. Okay. That we're going to pull up to, and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday is the contest, and then we fly back out Monday. You're in the contest, right? No, I'm not in the contest. I'm one of the, I'm doing like the social media part. Okay, okay, okay. Because if I try to compete You got your gimbals, you got everything ready? Pretty much. Yeah. And All I, right. I just got to get my shirt set up, and I got to get... Just go to the laundry, get like my clothes from there. And I'm- Lambs, you got everything ready? You brought um, you took your vaccinations. Mm-hmm. Nigga, you gotta take a vax to go out there. No, you don't. Yeah, you're American yeah. vax, bro. You okay. know what I mean? You gotta make sure nothing. I'm turning Japanese. I think I'm turning Japanese. I really no. think so. No, I was joking. I was joking. I was joking. No. I was jo- you gonna draw me something? I don't know what you want. <laughs> what do I want? 
Like, what do I want? Anything, we were both I want the laugh. You know what I would really like? I would like a rendition of the laugh now, cry later face. Yeah. La- la- if you look up laugh now. I would really like a, a personal rendition of that because I don't want to use. I got a couple logos of it, but I don't want to use somebody's shit. I want to go with one of my own. Go ahead, Rich. You can walk us out. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, we're obviously going to take a little hiatus because from the show. You better come back. Huh? You better come back. Don't fall in love with a Japanese bitch out there and say, yo, fuck it, girl. I'm staying here. No, that's you. I can see you doing that. No. No, I can see you doing I can that. I see him doing that. Lambs? <laughs> He's I could like, totally lambs. You could do that. You you would fall in love with a chick out there. No, no, she no, she she's saying she she be talking English to you. She just talking like this. Oh, yeah, this nigga's a real freak. That's what I'm talking about, yeah. He's like, I don't even want her to speak. To- Yo, that be fire. How will we communicate? Psh, oh man. Word, we don't have to communicate, bitch. Hey, she'll be talking like, I don't know what you just said, but just keep on talking. Right. If, if, if y'all like, you got food, you got clothes, then you, you straight. Hey, look, <laughs> we, we only got to learn a couple languages. Like, this is one, this is one. <laughs> yeah, um, he, like, uh, I can only imagine the culture. I can't wait. It's going to be dope. Like, Oh, I know, nigga. I know. Telling you, you're gonna stand out. You're gonna look like Stefan Marbury's nephew out there, B. And you got a bald head. What, nigga? I tell you, no Japanese bitch is gonna eat you up, son. Yeah, you're gonna be walking around yo yo. Oh, I love yo yo yo. What? That bitch is gonna look like he's nervous already. Look at his face. Look at his face. Yo, that's what I'm talking about. Wow, yo, son, if you get some Jap, I told you, you know, the vagina, vagina sits sideways like a Honda engine. It's not the same. Okay, come on. You don't have to go off. That's stereotypical. <laughs> Yo, we out of here, y'all. Have a good Sunday. We'll see you in like a week and a half. Peace, love, and goes to you all. <laughs>